Hi everyone, so today we're going to try and uh, speedrun the um, Certified SolidWorks exam, uh, the associate exam in, uh, in FreeCAD. By doing so, we're going to learn a lot about being efficient with uh, keyboard uh, shortcuts, especially in the sketch view and when adding constraints, but also making a part that is really difficult to break because the part of the exam is to change parameters a lot and uh, measure the part's mass as, uh, as an answer to the exam. And let's have a quick look at the instructions. So you can find the exam as an example online. And the exam is made of a few parts. The first part I'm going to skip uh, is just asking about what a certain features are called and it's a multiple question exam. The next part, and I haven't tried this in FreeCAD yet. So I'm going to do this for the first time and is a part modeling exercise and it's made out of a few parts. And I think the time you have is around 70 uh, minutes for this. So you have the basic part creation, intermediate part creation and advanced part creation. We're going to skip the assembly because they will give you a model and we don't have it. So I'm going to start the timer now and have a look at the part. So we have a reasonably complex section. This is extruded. As a pad, we have one parameter here, A and B down here. I'm going to pay some attention in making sure this is perfectly constrained. Then we're going to have to assign values to A, B and C. Probably best to name these parameters anyway. And so I want to work off a sketch and then maybe use a plane to uh, do the extrusion. So let's start from here, create a new body and a new sketch, use the XZ plane and then start GM to create a polyline. And I'm going to start from here. So one, two, three, and then the other 45 degrees corner, horizontal, then I'm going to go down by 10 degrees. Not going to care about the dimension right now. And then I need an arc, so GA arc one and two and then again polyline g m it's easy to remember polyline because it's g l for a single line and m which is the letter that comes after m so i'm struggling to not do tangent so it's just create a single line horizontal and then start the polyline g m chamfer here, coming down and then down here to where the tooth profile is going to be drawn. Now GA for an arc. So the center is on this line. I'm going to start the arc there. I'm going to go up and then there's another arc. So GA. Center here. Horizontal G. L for a line. This is going to connect to this. We have a closed profile and now we can start adding some constraints. So this needs to be horizontal. And the shortcut for that is H. And then I'm going to set a tangent with pressing T between these two. This is fine. These two also need to be tangent because it's, it's also marked down here. And these two need to be tangent as well. So that should be everything in terms of tangency. We also need to draw the hole in the middle. Now, if I start from this area, I can set the angle. So K for constraints, A for angle, and this to the horizontal is going to be 45. We just actually set it to 45 exactly. G A between, uh, I'm sorry, K A between these two, or maybe between this and the horizontal. It's 45. It's a bit easier to read than just 135. Then 10 degrees between this and horizontal. So K A. 
let's use the horizontal then and I'm going to move it up a little bit any other angles yeah this angle it's okay a again 45 exactly and this doesn't have an angle so I think all of the angles have been done and from the left if I start dimensioning the chamfer so distance is kd and I'm going to set the distance between these two points to 7 move these a little bit to they are legible and then I've got 14 center to horizontal and then I have 32 between this line and the horizontal so okay I just left the sketch accidentally so KD between this uh, da, 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 I left again so distance being yeah KD between uh, some some reason I can't pick up the horizontal line but that's not a problem I can just do this that's now 32 millimeters and this distance is 7 so KD 7 mil that side is done then horizontal distance of the center is 14 millimeters the diameter so KD to dimension the diameter is 14 mil this was new to me so KD nope oh uh, diameter is um, it's not KD so if you hit KR dimension the radius if you hit R again you are dimensioning the diameter so 14 mil that's okay then what else do we have is this 14 mil as well or is it just implying let's just leave it for now the radius of this is 19 so KR is going to give us the radius so 19 mil the distance between this and this vertical bit are 29 millimeter the height of the chamfer here is 5 millimeters the height of this point is 24 and then we are getting to the first named constraint so let's go back to the sketch so B is 57 but I'm going to set B as the distance between this node and this line that's would we say 57 yeah 57 and I'm gonna add a name and I'm gonna call it B so this makes sure it's going to show up outside of sketcher and we can access it easier easier the height of the radius is 19 mil and so again kd between this i had selected something accidentally kd between this and this is one nine and then the horizontal distance between this and this is 29 so again kd 29 so that pretty much constrains all of this lot 24 5 yeah so this should all be constrained then we have 19 also is the distance between this and this okay D 19 mil and that fixes the um, length of the tooth profile the radius of this arc is 29 so kr 29 mil and the radius of this is 5 so r5 the overall width is a a is 81 so i'm going to dimension between k 
KD this and the vertical was it 81 millimeters okay and I think this dimension 14 oh yeah so it's doubled up so you can see 14 here let me just zoom in a bit so this 14 is the position of the center horizontally this 14 here is the position of this edge so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so that we can see what we're doing without too much chaos and then move this out of the way so that it's not too terrible okay so the distance of this edge to the vertical axis is 14. Right, it's fully constrained. Um, or I forgot to set 81 to the A dimension. I'm going to close this. And now we have the sketch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the extrusion not as an extrusion feature. So I'm just going to rename this to profile sketch but I'm going to set uh, C as a, an offset plane from exit plane. And I'm going to do it by picking up datum plane and XZ. And these are relative to the plane local coordinate system. So we have to go in Z. So normal to the plane by 43 mil and I'm going to call the name the plane sorry as plane C so that we know that C is the distance so we can access the offset by going to attachment position so that can change so we can move the plane and we can use it as a reference. So now if I move the plane above the sketch to the beginning of the body, and then on the, I'm, I'm going to use the sketch as a pad reference, and I'm going to go up to face and select the plane. So the plane is now going to drive the thickness of the pad. Now we have everything, and It seems that everything is going okay. I'm now, and now I have to calculate the overall mass of the part. Now, we can't calculate the mass in uh, FreeCAD in part design because it doesn't have uh, good support for materials. But what we can do is we can estimate the uh, volume. So to estimate the volume, we're going to go to think inspection oh, it's in part design we have to go to Is it in where was it this is what I panic in part maybe I remember it was under tools oh yeah it's under tools and it's this tool right here there we go so is check geometry run check and then you can see on the shape content there should be a 
area, but that's not right because I need to select it first and then run check. And now we have, here we go, this mass, this volume. This is 11829, that's in millimeter squared times zero, sorry, cube bar times 0 0.0079. Um, and we get 939.53, so that's answer D. We will check it later on the key. Oh, let's check it now. There's a answer key at the end. 939.54, there we go. So that's part A done. We now can switch to part step two. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to part design, close the task window, and then I need all I need to do now is the same material, but I need to change A, B, and C to these values. So first thing, I'm going to open the profile sketch, and under constraints, I should have A and B here. So A becomes 84, we'll watch the part change without breaking. We have to change B to 59. Again, watch the part change without breaking and then the plane offset moves to <coughs> 45. This is moved, it's fine. Nothing's broken, I'm gonna hit save again. I'm gonna go to part and I'm going to hit the inspection tool again. I'm going to check the mass now. So the number has changed to, again, this is assuming we've got a unit density. So I have to multiply that by 0 0.0079 and I get 1032.32. Let's see if we've got that right. 1032.32. Excellent. So two out of two for now. It's a good start, but now it's where it's going to become a bit challenging. So <clears throat> let me check if A, B, and C haven't changed. So A is 86. And this is something that can really catch you out because maybe you forget to change A, B, and C. So A is 86. So I'm going to change these now. B is 58 and C is 44. So attachment position 44. So we are in the right place and we can now work on making these cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the geometry and I'm going to create this cutout first on both the whole side and the tooth side. So basically all I need to create is a sort of rectangular profile that's picking up from here and I'm going to retrace, either retrace this or maybe just create a rectangular sketch that is constrained to this geometry. So to do this, I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane and I need to switch to part design. So again, this is all to avoid the model breaking. And so select the plane first and then sketch. We are now sketching on this plane and you can press one to go back to the normal view in the sketcher. I'm going to activate the cut section so that we can see the axes and we can reference the axes. I'm also going to hide the plane so that we can reference the sketch. So all I need to do is I need to kind of draw a cut that starts from here and does this. But I'm going to tie it up to the sketch below. I'm going to use external geometry, that's GX. I'm going to use this. I'm going to have to use the vertical bit here. This might be useful. 
and the maybe that's everything I need so let's see if I can tie these together so I can coincident is O so point onto object so I want to put this point onto this line I also want to put this point into this vertical line I actually don't need to put this point onto this line let's just undo that so I need to put this point onto this line I need to put this point onto this line and I need to put this point on the horizontal so that's only now free to move horizontally and this is dimensioned off the right so that's 52 mil off the right face so I need to pick up this with a distance constraint so KD and that's going to be 52 mil that's a fixed dimension so we don't really care about whether it's okay to change but we should still be careful about not you know making it particularly wrong so I need a plane that's 19 mil from plane C to end the extrusion so click on plane click on datum plane so this is still referencing XZ so I need to click on plane and select the new datum plane so I can't do that so you can't reference so this is changing plane C actually so if I create a new plane from blank and I select this plane as a reference it won't let me there we go so datum plane and now we want to go back so negative Z 19 so that's now referencing plane C and coming back and I'm going to call this plane cut stop so this is going to stop this cut but also the tooth cut that we're going to do in a second I want to do these two cuts separately just for consistency so now from here this is left cut sketch I'm going to use pocket and I'm going to create a pocket that goes up to the plane that we just created hit OK and that's the top cut that we can see here I'm going to do the tooth cut sketch as well so move create another sketch on this plane and hide the plane I hide both planes maybe hide the solid as well and I want to pick up on basically I want to draw a rectangle to do the cut but the rectangle needs to be on the horizontal and it basically needs to cut everything so I can just attach this node to here and I only need to pick up this and make sure that this node is on this line so what happens now is it's basically going to be tied to it I also need to end this rectangular profile and I can end it to the tip of the tooth I'm gonna get this out and link these nodes so that's the other cutting tool that we've created and this is just referencing I mean, a base sketch and planes and so this is the just for consistency bottom cut sketch and I'm going to use this as a pocket to cut 
up to face and the face is going to be cut stop so that's been picked up and this is now resembling these two the other cut that we have to do is this hole and it's a true hole so I'm going to do that hole from the plane C um, maybe no maybe let's just do it from what we can do is if we feel adventurous is we can go in and edit profile sketch and we can add in a hole so let's try that let's see if we can break the model I think I have let's try that so KD dimension this to this 14 this to this is also 14 and KRR to dimension the diameter that's 11 okay this has worked so we modified a driving sketch really up in the model and nothing broke because we used a driving sketch and planes and all references that were picking up stuff from the original sketch so none of this had to reference any faces that were generated from a feature and so we didn't end up hitting the uh, topological naming problem now the only thing I'm missing is this cut so to do this I can set myself on a plane that's 12 mil off of the main plane so I'm going to use XZ I'm going to create another datum plane this is going to be 12 mil in Z I'm going to call this round cut start and then from there we've got 24 mil another plane so from here on Z 24 and this is going to be round cut end so I'm gonna hide this I'm gonna show the original driving profile I'm gonna place myself in round cut start and I'm gonna sketch the cross section so that's a 41 mil radius it's going to be let's hide the planes so I'm gonna need this and this edge so again get this and this edge get a G a for an arc and I'm gonna place it in an arbitrary point and draw it in a random place so these two are going to have to be coincidence so to like to do and press O that's the same as using the tool this will need to end on this line but we haven't picked it up yet so I'm going to do so now and this is going to end on the arc so I'm going to pick this up now so select these three and press O coincident and select these two and press O for coincident now all we need to do is to set the radius so K R radius is 41 and then we need to set the height of this so 36 mil so k d this point this line k6 fully constrained now we can't really use this as a cutting tool but what we can do is we can just go up then we can go horizontal then I can go vertical and I'm going to add some constraints in a minute so this is going to be horizontal this point is going to well this point and this point are going to be coincident so oh uh, that can't move this can move so I'm going to put this point on this line oh and that's our cutting tool completed leave the sketch go back to the model show the part 
and I'm going to use round cat get and I'm going to use this as a pocket up to face and I'm going to select round cut end and because I've named them I don't need to show them because I know what they are from a functional point of view. I'm going to add the profile and that should be our part. See if we have made any mistakes. It doesn't look like so. I've already changed A, B and C to the actual numbers. So let's verify the mass. I'm going to go to part. I'm going to select this tool, run check and I'm going to copy the mass or the volume times 0 0.0079 and we get 628.18. Let's have a look at the key. 628.18, yes. And that's the last of the easy steps. I'm going to hit save. The last bit is going to be a bit of a nightmare because ideally in a CAD software you would do a, what's called, a, in some software it's called a thin wall feature or a pocket. In uh, FreeCAD you have a tool, I'm going to spend a second doing this. You've got thickness, you can make a thick solid from a part, but what's going to happen is this is going to go through the whole solid. The thing is we can't you can't set a plane to stop the solid. So all this is going to do is it's going to cut through the faces that you select, but you can't set a stopping point, that, uh, which is something you can do in, in other CAD software. Unfortunately, this isn't possible. Uh, so I'm going to rename this to question five. Again, don't do this in a real model. Uh, in a real model, you have to kind of communicate the function a little bit better than question five. And to do this, I'm going to have to do two cuts, I suspect, and play around with some dimensions a little bit. So I'm going to put myself in on the I'll show the profile sketch and I'm going to need to put myself in I might need these two. Let's think about it because I don't want to reference this face. So the moment I reference this face, then I am going to hit the topological naming problem because this face is going to change name and the sketch is going to lose all of its references. So I'm going to actually hide the part and I'm going to show maybe bottom cut sketch. That might be useful as a reference. And I'm going to place myself into a new sketch on plane C. So I should be on plane C, but let's verify. Yeah, I'm on plane C. Let's hide it, hit one. So what I need here is I need all of this geometry. So I'm going to use external geometry again on this, 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 this this, the horizontal line, which is a bit hidden by the origin, which I'm going to try and hide. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I am then going to need, I don't really need the bottom tooth profile, but I do need this line. There we go. So I have all of the stuff I need and I'm just want to basically draw um, a profile that's one millimeter offset inwards. So you can't do it in FreeCAD, but some CAD software has a feature that's called offset and you just select some lines and create a shape that is a bit smaller. But we have to work with what we have. So I'm gonna hide the original profile, hide this and hide this then start drawing again. So GM for a polyline. I'm gonna then I'm going to use a lot of equality um, or parallelisms. 
I'm going to do this and then I need an arc so uh, G A pick this up start from here and end here right so that's all the lines I need this two need to be parallel so you can use equal uh, da, 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 da. you can use parallel so capital P and I'm gonna set these two as parallel and I'm going to set these two as parallel the radii are already concentric so the typical thickness is one mil so I'm going to dimension these I'm going to dimension this and this and how this to one and then maybe this to this and that's one what do we have that is already that's still free this is free so okay d this to this is one mil and then so this is already oh this is still free because we need a tangent so is t tangent yes so this needs to be tangent and that constrains the arc brilliant leave the sketch and then show everything well not everything but this again and we want to go down by effectively where the round cut ends but from this plane we don't really have a dimension so let's go back and look at the dimension so we have to stop at so that's C minus 12 minus 24 plus 1 so I can reference the plane C in the equation I'll show you how so from there let's just so that's um, thick shell sketch And I'm going to extrude it for by a number, a fixed number now using a pocket. I'm going to set this pocket to 5 mil just because. But where I want it to be is. Do I have a plane? Actually, I do have a plane. Well, no, there's a, there's a better way to do this. So we have round cut end. So you can stop pocket three at round cut end. So you can go up to face here and then you can set an offset so I'm going to set negative one and that's our uh, thin feature here I'm going to set this in the model then I need to pick up the radius and a little bit of this part again and go down all the way to round cut start so again on plane C I need another sketch I could start from I could start from round cut start in this case and let's sketch on that plane I'm going to hide solid again and I'm going to show some of the sketches so I need in this case I need the round cut sketch and I'm going to need the profile and I'm also going to need the left cut and the bottom cut so basically I need to encase this so I need to external geometry this 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 the horizontal profile not this but this 
and then the vertical bit here that's all I need so I can hide all of the sketches so right click and again trace this so KM for a uh, sorry GM well, I've lost that now GM for a polyline I didn't really need that but let's just start from here there down and right and up here and then I need to arc so GA this is one of the arcs starts from here gets to here and then GA again the second arc starts from here and connects these two again this is a workaround in, in, in other CAD software you shouldn't really have to do this but let's set these two to parallel set these two to parallel let's set these two to tangent so capital T and let's set these two to parallel and then we'll set all of the distances to one mil so KD one 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 and one and then we have to set one of the two radii I'm going to so that's 41 so this must be 42 so KR 42 and that's everything constrained come out of it going to show the original solid and oh, I've sketched on the wrong plane now is this a problem we can use attachment editor and we can attach the model to a different plane so round cut start is where we wanted it so see if that worked we've lost a bunch of stuff We've got some stuff left. Let's see if it hasn't broken. Well, it hasn't broken. I've just moved a sketch to another plane. But because everything was referencing off an original sketch and the planes were parallel, this was not a problem at all. And uh, let's just hit recompute. Nothing broke. It's all fine. Now, from this point, I'm going to hide all of the sketches. And I'm going to use Sketch 05 as a cutting tool. So leave the sketch. Sketch 05 as a pocket tool through all, but I want to go the other way. There we go. So this should be our feature. See if we got it. Um, there's no changes in the A, B, and C dimensions, so we can assume the dimensions are the same. So go to part, hit, select the object, and run check. Shape content, we've got 0.4757 times 0.0079 got 432.58 is that the answer 432.58 we got all of the answers right and can hit save so hope you learned something this was a really fun speed run check the time under in in the video and um if you want to try and beat me um have a go and uh Hope that you learned something i'm going to put the model in the github the link is in the description if you want to learn more on how not to break your free cut parts subscribe to the channel and let me know what you would like to see next and maybe i'll try the solidworks professional exam next All right thank you very much see it